Good morning, Algebra 2 Trig Honor students. So it's Mr. Chen again. So this one is for sections 9.4, 9.5 from the Big Idea textbook. So it's an introduction of trigonometry. Objective, understand that the three basic trigonometric relationship. So you may be noticing that this one we're doing two sections at the same time. So the one that we have from the Big Idea is saying that it's the ratios of tangent for 9.4. 9.5, that would be the ratios of cosine and sine. Okay, so let's talk about that, the, um, the way to put in the ratio for cosine, sine, and tangent. There's always like a shortcut for doing that. It's called Sokotoa. So, so, that means it's sine, sine of angle A. It's always opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite leg over the hypotenuse leg. As you can see that base A, angle A, so that would be the base angle here. So what we got here, adjacent, then that will be considered segment AC or line B or line segment B, okay? So, and then hypotenuse, then that will be considered C. So let's just label it. So B, which is adjacent. Adjacent, I mean, it's just like the corresponding segments right next to the base angle. And then the opposite segments, so then that will be A, little, little A right here, opposite, facing across. Okay, so let's give the name. So cosine of angle A, so that would be considered adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, so Katoa. So, so that means sine. Ka, that means cosine. And then Toa, that means tangent. Again, this one is just the abbreviations of sine, cosine, and tangent. So as you can see, that sine of angle A, opposite leg over hypotenuse. So it's A over C, cosine of angle A, adjacent over hypotenuse, so B over C, and then tangent, opposite leg over adjacent leg, so it's A over B. So using those ratios, so we'll be able to find out that the corresponding um, sine, cosine, tangent. Okay, so this one is one of the special right triangle. So Back to the previous section, so 30, the corresponding ratios of the segment would be 1x. And then 60 degree, corresponding segments, then that will be root 3x. And then hypotenuse, the longest leg, the corresponding ratio, <coughs> which is 2x. Okay, so <coughs> let's find out that sine, cosine, and tangent. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So sine of 30, so what we found here, it's opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 1x over 2x, then that'd be 1 over 2. So sine of 60, so opposite over hypotenuse, so then that'd be root 3x over 2x, which is root 3 over 2. And then cosine of 30, so 30, that'd be the base angle. So cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent, the segment right next to the base angle, so it's root 3 x over 2x. So then that'll be root 3 over 2. Sine of 60, so using 60 as the base angle, adjacent over hypotenuse, so 1x over 2x, which is 1 half. And then tangent of 30, <coughs> so 30, that'll be the base angle, opposite over adjacent, so it's 1x over root 3x, so which is 1 over root 3. Rationalize it, so we do have root 3 over 3. And then the other one, tangent of 60, so 60 is the base angle, so opposite over adjacent, so root 3x over 1x, which is considered root 3. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. So using the figure, find the tangent of angle ACD. So ACD is all the way up here. So one thing that we noticed, so this one is 4, 8, and we need to find out that the measure of AD first. So using proportionality, we do know that the geometric means, so that would be considered 4 over X equals A over 4 using proportionality. So basically this one can cross multiply. The reason why that it's considered this kind of proportionality is because that the similar right triangle, uh, which we'll get to it. And this one here, so 4x, so that equals ax. 
and then solve for well it's four excuse me it's four times four so then that'll be sixteen so x times a a x divided by eight so x equals two so once we be able to find out that the um, the rest of the segment here so we'll get that tangent of ACD so opposite over adjacent so it's 2 over 4 so which is 1 half sine of angle A so sine of angle A so we need to get the hypotenuse so hypotenuse for this one using the Pythagorean theorem so we do have square root of 2 square plus 4 square so square of 2 squared plus 4 squared, then that would be square root of 20, which is considered 2 root 5. Okay, so using that sine of angle, uh, using the ratio, so sine of angle A, so opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 4 over 2 root 5. Reduce, so we do have 2 over root 5, and then rationalize it multiply by root 5 top and the bottom so we do have 2 root 5 over 5 and then cosine of angle B so cosine of angle B which is this one here so adjacent over hypotenuse again hypotenuse is missing using Pythagorean theorem so we got 4 square plus a square and then square root of the whole quantity so this one is finding that segment BC so the square root of 16 plus 64. So this one will end up with root 80. And also this one you want to reduce, <coughs> you want to factor and then try to come up with the perfect square number, non-perfect square number. So 16 over 5, so it's 4 root 5. So segment BC is 4 root 5. And then cosine of angle B adjacent over hypotenuse. So what we found here is 8 over 4 root 5. Again, reduce. So we do have 2 over root 5, and then rationalize it. So 2 root 5 over 5. Okay, so given that sign of angle P is 3 fifth. Okay, so that's given already. PQ is 10. Find cosine of angle P, tangent of angle P. So since we already know the ratios of sine of angle P, which is opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 over 5. Okay, so according to that, the hypotenuse, the actual segment is what, 10. Opposite, since we don't know what that is, so let's say that it's either X or Y. But let's, you know what, let's use Y here. So using proportionality, the ratios, and then the actual line segments. So we can set up that the proportional equation. So cross multiply, so we do have 30 equals 5y, and then divided by 5, so y equals 6. And then once we get that opposite, and then we can get the uh, adjacent. So adjacent, that will be considered Pythagorean theorem, using that square root of 10 square minus 6 square, so 100 minus 36. So square root of 64. Square root of 64, then that'd be 8. Okay, so angle P, that's the base angle in this case. So cosine of angle P, which is considered adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's A over 10. So 4 fifth. And then tangent of angle P, opposite over adjacent. So 6 over 8, which is 3 over 4. So again, any time they see any line segments of the right triangles missing there, so that means just want to find out that first, and then applying the ratio, so Katoa, and then you'll be get, able to get the, uh, the fractions, the simplest one. Okay, so now let's see what else. Then the last page for this lesson, proof. So given that triangle ABC, in which angle C, it's 90 degree, so you want to show that sine of angle A quantity square plus sine of angle A quantity square equals 1. So using those ratios, so sine of angle A, so A is the base angle. So we got opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse with all those corresponding letters. 
So sine of angle A is considered A over C, because that's opposite over hypotenuse, quantity squared. Cosine of angle A, adjacent over hypotenuse, so B over C, quantity squared. And now you want to show that equals 1. So using the algebraic approach, square top and the bottom, the fraction, so we got A squared over C squared. And then the other one is B squared over C squared. Same common denominator, so that means you just want to combine those numerators together. So it's a squared plus b squared over c squared. And one thing that we notice, a squared plus b squared is the exact same thing as c squared, because that's the Pythagorean theorem. So we got c squared over c squared with the replacement of that a squared plus b squared. So eventually, reduce. So it's one proof. And then the other one is similar it's a similar situation so sine of angle A so we found it already so it's A over C using the exact same diagram here so 90 minus angle A so back to what we did for the previous chapter so this one is considered the alternate well it's actually called the sum of a triangle so 90 minus angle A then we'll get angle B okay so cosine of angle B so cosine of angle B, so B would be the base angle this time, so using A as the adjacent, so it's A over C. So we got A over C equals A over C. Okay, so thank you for watching the video today. So any questions, any comments that you have, so you're more than welcome to put it right there in the comment bar. Okay, so I'm more than happy to reply to that. So once again, thank you for watching it. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.